Samsung really needs the Exynos 2600 to be a success, and here's why. For years, Samsung's Exynos chips have had a bad reputation. People still remember the overheating issues, weak battery life, and modem problems from older chips like the Exynos 990, 2100, and 2200. A lot of Galaxy users who had bad experiences with Exynos in the past now say they'll never buy a Galaxy phone with Exynos again. And honestly, I get it. Those issues were real. But this mindset can actually hurt Samsung in the long run. If everyone keeps rejecting Exynos, Qualcomm keeps all the power. And when one company dominates, prices just keep going up, which is exactly what's happening right now. Qualcomm makes amazing chips, no doubt. They're fast, efficient, and their modems are the best. But they're also very expensive. The Snapdragon 8 Gen 4 for Galaxy costs Samsung around $190 per chip, and the Galaxy S25 Ultra costs about $523 to make. So one third of that total cost is just for the processor. The new Snapdragon 8 Gen 5 Elite is rumored to cost between $240 and $280, which could make up almost half the cost of building the phone. And that's not all. Samsung also has to pay Qualcomm $1625 in royalties for every phone sold. By June 2025, Samsung reportedly sold 20 million Galaxy S25 phones. That means Qualcomm made about $3.8 billion just from the chips, plus another $325 million in royalties. That's insane money, and Samsung is basically Qualcomm's biggest customer. So even if Exynos doesn't always match Snapdragon in raw power, using it can save Samsung billions. That money could be used for better cameras, displays, and software updates. Things that actually make a phone better for users. But here's the problem. Samsung can't keep relying on Qualcomm forever. It's a business, and as much as people want the best performance, Samsung also has to make profit. TM Rowe, the CEO of Samsung Mobile, has to make sure the company meets its goals. And if Snapdragon chips keep getting more expensive, Samsung will have no choice but to use more Exynos chips to keep costs under control. Prices are rising everywhere. TSMC, the company that makes Snapdragon chips, is increasing its prices by about 10%, and its 2NM process might cost up to 50% more. So if Samsung wants to stay competitive, it needs to focus on its own chips and foundry. The main reason Exynos struggled before wasn't the design, it was the foundry, the place where the chips are made. The Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 and 8 Plus Gen 1 are basically the same chip. But the 8 Plus Gen 1 runs cooler and more efficiently because it was built by TSMC instead of Samsung. That's why the Exynos 2200 phones had more heat and battery drain issues. So if Samsung can fix its foundry and match TSMC's quality, it could make strong and efficient chips on its own. That would save money and give Samsung more control over the chips. And there's another reason this matters. If Exynos does well, it helps Samsung foundry too. When Samsung skipped Exynos for the Galaxy S25 lineup, it reportedly lost around $400 million because its own foundry didn't get that business. So a successful Exynos chip doesn't just help Galaxy phones, it helps Samsung's entire chip-making business. If Samsung can make Exynos chips that perform well and stay cool, other companies might even want Samsung to make chips for them in the future. Like Google, or maybe even Apple. Speaking of Google, look at what they're doing with Tensor. Google's Tensor chips are not the fastest. They're actually behind Snapdragon in performance. But Pixel phones still sell really well. Why? Because Google focuses on experience. Their phones feel smooth, have great cameras, and come with smart AI features like call screen and magic editor. So performance isn't everything anymore. We've hit a point where even mid-range phones are fast enough for daily use. What matters now is the experience, the camera, AI tools, battery life, and optimization. Samsung could do the same thing. They already have a strong partnership with Google. Imagine if Samsung and Google worked even closer together, like optimizing apps and games specifically for Galaxy devices. Imagine if the Play Store highlighted apps that run best on Galaxy. That would make a huge difference, and it would finally give Exynos the chance to shine. There's no reason Android apps should still lag behind iOS and Polish. Samsung could make it easier for developers to optimize for Galaxy phones and tablets. At the end of the day, Samsung needs to believe in Exynos again. Because every time they choose Snapdragon, they make Qualcomm stronger and themselves weaker. 
We've already reached the point where phones are fast enough. What matters now is how smooth they feel, how smart the software is, and how efficient they run. If the Exynos 2600 can finally fix the heating issues, deliver solid performance, and pair it with Samsung's great optimization, it could be the start of a big comeback. If Exynos succeeds, Samsung succeeds. And if Samsung Foundry succeeds, the whole Android ecosystem wins. That's why the Exynos 2600 isn't just another chip, it's Samsung's comeback story, the one they have to get right.